to Melbourne. I think the whole world's probably seen what's going on down there at the moment. And uh, what a uh, can of worms. So let's start with this suggestion of far right extremists. It was a ridiculous statement for starters. Extreme compared to what? Uh, extreme left? Uh, extreme right? I mean, we've seen both in the last century. So to suggest that this is a you know, far right extremist is completely ignorant of uh, history if we're comparing it to the last hundred years. If we're suggesting that this is extreme um, compared to the to the left as it sits, it's almost like uh, the left side has a riot squad at their disposal. Weaponry. But you have to remember in Australia, the public isn't weaponized. Following the, the massacre in Port Arthur 20 odd years ago, we, uh, I think it was 96, we, so 25 years ago, we took all the weapons away from people. Now, that's not an anti-establishment uh, statement, but I don't think that uh, it provides a level playing field if uh, you've got the capacity to turn weapons internally um, and you've only got one side having weapons. That's not a fair fight. So you can't turn around and suggest that there's extreme far-right behaviour when the left side are the ones that has weapons. That would suggest far left. And again, just in case, this is not anti-establishment, this is not incitement, this is not encouragement, it's just a bird's eye view looking at situational factors across time. Because if we're going to start using phrases and discussing like extremists um, and discussing the left and the right, you have to put it in context. And yes, absolutely, in our lifetime, for all of us, we are seeing the greatest uh, gap forming between the left and right. That's fine. But historically, even just reducing it to the last hundred years, for which is on film, this is not extreme behaviour. It's only extreme for what we've seen in our lives. So we really want to differentiate that. So with respect to the left and the right and the dividing gap, it's very easy to label the other side as being nuts, no matter which side you're on. Like, that's why you have the left and right side of parliament. That's why you've got uh, voting that sees this generally come down to you know, 49, 51, for an analogy. You know, like, you, you've got this divide, and it's a demonstration of people's temperament. Now, if that's not to get in a discussion of uh, semantics, don't confuse temperament with temper. This is not a discussion of violence or the other. It's the behaviour, thought patterns, and feelings of people. People like to think that they vote on you know, policies and they think they've got this well-structured uh, viewpoint of the world and they vote on that, but they don't. They vote on how they feel and that's how you end up having this, uh, these two sides of parliament and the two sides of law processes. So when it comes to suggesting that what we're seeing in uh, Melbourne is far-right extremists, um, I, I don't think that uh, that's a very accurate statement in any context. Uh, I think it's antagonistic. Uh, I don't think it's helpful. And one could say, well, neither's uh, storming a building, for sure. But uh, who would who would encourage that? Like, I'm not a fan of screaming at people and smashing things. You, if someone doesn't want to hear me, I just won't talk. If somebody, uh, if I want to smash things. I just go, well, I've got to clean it up then, don't I? You just cause a mess. So I, I 
don't see the uh, breaking through police barricades, you go, to get to the other side to do what? Uh, okay, I've broken through a barricade, I'm thirsty now. I'll have a glass of water, what, go home? You know, like, I, I, I don't resonate with that behaviour. But uh, if you were to say uh, that the person, that all those people, uh, like has been quoted, um, you know, are not union members, you know, like, is that even really possible? Like, are we suggesting that there is that many, as they've been called, neo-Nazis, uh, <laughs> man babies, um, what other other things have they been called? Cowards, uh, I don't know. But long long story cut short, sure. like if it's not got anything to do with the uh, the union members, and it's just neo-Nazi groups and anti-vax groups, then why shut down the construction industry for two weeks in response to it for fear of non-compliance like you can you can come up with all sorts of you know uh, justifications but if it's literally got nothing to do with the construction industry <laughs> then why are you shutting the construction industry down yeah, I mean of course there'll be some excuse inside of that oh it's because there's been uh, we can demonstrate that you know X number of cases have, have been come uh, or link, sorry, from the construction industry. Okay, fine. Sounds a bit convenient though. Sounds more like that you're just punishing the construction industry. And I'm not saying that's what you're doing, but that's what it sounds like it. And what do you think that's going to do? Yeah, here's a red flag to a bull who's already pissed off. Yeah, you, you're not a bull with tick fever and you go and wave a red flag at it. What do you think is gonna happen there? Now, if you're already dealing with, uh, with let, let's say we're even suggesting that this is illogical and irrational behavior, why would you poke the bear? Sounds like a monumental uh, cock up and Imagine being the uh, the police that are in amongst in amongst this, thinking that they're doing their duty by going and uh, protecting. It's almost like it's very easy to say either side's nuts, but both sides have got to consider that human rights trump orders. Now, again, that's not to suggest it's anti-establishment. That's what was concluded, as far as I understood from the trials at Nuremberg following World War II, that there's certain uh, inalienable, I suppose you would call the word, uh, human rights that you cannot say that you were following orders to commit uh, acts against human rights. That puts everybody in an awkward position. but. Having not even established that prior, people were hung under such a partial pretense. So we've got human rights questions to answer to, and we can't just go and say one side is virtuous, or okay, one side's really good, one side really bad, put simply very unintelligent way to look at the situation. What's the solution? Well, I'm sure everybody's got their opinions, but we only hear one. And we don't get to hear all the nuances in, inside of it. We only hear one way. And I don't know about you, but I wouldn't bet the farm on anything. Any one thing. So maybe we need to hear about all the other things that are in that are inside of it, and maybe we shouldn't stop those voices being heard. Which is happening everywhere. I mean, I 
put some stupid thing on, on, on YouTube about a Wonka bar and it gets 20 times the views of something that is got some bearing on human existence. I don't think there's that little number of people that actually care about what's a Wonka bar over what's going on. So I might leave it at that.